right. So here we go. They say Routers killed his parents. A true router hater. The most wanted enemy of the telecom companies in Mexico, Pedro HKM. Well, hi. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm from a uh, little bit information about me. I'm from uh, Cozumel Island in the Mexican Caribbean. You're all invited there. I'll tell you later. Um, I love hacking routers. <laughs> And I've uh, been a speaker at many conferences, and recently I founded a web security company with some friends. So Routerpwn, you can access it by going to www.routerpwn.com. It's a compilation of uh, ready-to-run local and remote web exploits, mostly web exploits. It currently has 138 uh, web exploits, three unique generators, and some exploits are still uh, O-Day. Uh, it's entirely made in HTML and JavaScript. The idea is to have it uh, run in any kind of device. It can run in most smartphones, even on not so smartphones, and old phones, and also on gaming consoles. On the Wii, it's very fun. And um, <laughs> it's only one web page, one simple web page, so you can store it offline for uh, well, offline exploitation, uh, local exploitation. Uh, and yeah, let me show you. So this is the interface. It has a cool 8-bit glowing logo. And after that, it has uh, the uh, name of the manufacturers. I added a lot of new manufacturers, also uh, firmware developers, or firmwares. And um, after that, you have the useful tools, like a Mac to vendor lookup, uh, an interface for Shodan, and the default password list. And then the three generators I was telling you about. The first one is the Iris password of the day generator for Iris cable modems. There's like this uh, tech support interface in which you need a, a password that changes every day. But this uh, program got leaked, and it's everywhere on the internet. So if you actually want the password of the day, you just click on it, and it tells you that that's the password of the day. <laughs> There's also a recent, well, an exploit published like three months ago for, uh, not, not an exploit, a generator for backdoor passwords in Acton-based switches. Um, this router point is mostly for hacking home routers and uh, access points and modems, but it also has uh, this generator. And the last one is uh, research we made for Huawei home gateway routers. That's a generator for the default wireless key. And you can see the interface is very similar to that of uh, exploit pages. It has the name of the exploit. Uh, the, difference, the main difference here is if you click on the name of the exploit, instead of taking you to the information about the exploit, it launches the exploit locally to the default IP. If you want to information about the exploit, you just click on the plus sign and it will take you to the, the advisory. Uh, if you click in the model, you can see pictures of the routers. So if you see a router and you don't know which model it is, you actually can click on those and kind of get the idea. If you want to launch the exploit remotely, you can click on the IP link, and a pop-up will say, what IP do you want to launch the exploit to? So um, we've made this an app for mobile devices, not for all mobile devices. Um, iPhone users, sorry, I just changed my iPhone to an Android, because it's better. And, um, <laughs> So if you want to, let's say, install this in the iPhone, you can just add a simple shortcut to your screen and have the icon there. Uh, but if you have an Android phone, you can download the app from the Android market. It's available again in the Android market because it was taken down, but it's now available, so get it while it's still there. <laughs> um, it, it's useful for offline exploitation in case you don't have internet access, yeah, you can just use it offline. So I brought a few videos here on the usage of the tool. The first one is an authentication bypass for SBG 900 cable modems, Motorola. The default username and password is admin Motorola, but in this case, we're going to try admin and something as a password. It's not really the password, but we'll try it. Press login, and it says nothing. It's not the password. So we use RouterPwn, click on Motorola, and then on the SBG change admin password exploit, uh, paste something, the password we just copied and it says continue. So let's see if it worked. We put admin as the user ID and just paste in the password we copied. 
and we got in. <laughs> this one's a little bit different. Um, some routers in Mexico, the most popular router in Mexico is the two-wire uh, router. There's an administration interface that runs on port 50001 uh, remotely. So you can see here it asks for a password, but we're going to try a remote denial of service. <laughs> so we copy the, the IP and then just look for two wire. And remember, we, oh, we're going to ping the modem so we, you can see it's alive and responding to pings. So we click on the IP link. So it asks for an IP, just paste in that IP. Click accept, and it has stopped responding to pings. <laughs> the third one is the Huawei generator I was uh, telling you about. Uh, we did this research, and um, we found out the algorithm for generating the default web or WPA keys. So this is the second most popular router in Mexico, actually. You can uh, see that it's a Huawei by, um, well, using any wire driving tools. So you can copy the MAC address, or just by the MAC address, looking for the vendor. So there we just copy the MAC address, and use router pwns generator. Let's see. Huawei, MAC to WebKey default wireless scheme. Just paste in the MAC and it gives us the web key. <laughs> so, let's, so let's test this web key. Let's see if it works. We're going to try to connect. And it seems to have worked. So we're going to try to get into the administration interface of the modem. But the only problem, actually, is that it's uh, protected. It has uh, a password. So the username is the name of the service provider, and the password is the same web key we just cracked. <laughs> And we're in. <laughs> this is a very simple vulnerability, but it's part of a greater one that I will show you in a moment. It's just a URL that's in two wire routers that allows you to, um, it's a in configuration disclosure vulnerability. You click on the link and it gives you the configuration. In the configuration, it's an XML in which you can see, I don't know, the DSL username and password in clear text. Also the ESS ID, for example, and also the default web key, the default wireless key in plain text. This is a very bad idea. <laughs> because the way you reset the password in uh, these routers is by using that default web key. So I'm going to show you this um, other um, password reset exploit that uses three vulnerabilities in order to reset the password. I'm going to show you how it works. So first we try to, uh, well, here's how it works. This is the link. If you copy the link, the script is actually contained inside the link. It's a JavaScript that performs um, XHR requests in order to get information from the modem and parse it and everything. Here you can see that the first vulnerability it uses is a, here over here, it's a cross-site scripting in order to get into the same zone as the router. After that, uh, it parses the same page we you just looked at, the configuration disclosure page. It looks for the web key, and once it has the web key, it uses that web key in, it, in the form to reset the password. So um, this is how it looks. Uh, we're going to try to enter the advanced configuration interface of the modem. It asks for a password. We don't know the password, so we're going to just try auth bypass as a password. So we copy that. And of course, it says the password is incorrect. So this is how it looks when you uh, launch the exploit from the router phone. Just click on the link. And it asks for a new password, based in the auth bypass. Let it do its thing, its thing. And after that, it says done. So let's try it. Let's see if it worked. 
we're going to try to access the same advanced configuration interface and just paste in that password. Click OK. And we're in. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's still a few functions I'm uh, working on, like uh, adding more exploits. I'm always looking for more exploits. I have to scrape the lists and ask people for them. And recently, um, many persons have sent me their exploits, even exploits that are not available online, some that they have been keeping. You can only find them in this tool, so it's really good. Some Contrend and some Xavi exploits for strange German and other routers. Uh, I wanted also to check for uh, exploitation before actually exploiting the router. <laughs> uh, firmware version detection also, and to port more tools and generators. So you can use the contact form, that's uh, routerpwn.com slash contact, in order to send me your stuff or your contributions. Regarding the device detection, um, I have been working on something. I try to do this detection by using uh, images that are um, stored in the local administrator interface of the modems. Um, here, I have some videos. For example, this is the detection of a two-wire. If you can try, you want to try to just put slash detect.html. It's not linked uh, from the main page, but uh, it's in beta. You can see it's really quick. It says manufacturer, model, and the IP. It works for about, uh, I think I have like 10 different signatures. Uh, if it doesn't detect your modem, it actually shows you a form so you can submit your, your path, your image path. Works for thumbs and also speed touch. And the last video I will show you, I forgot about it. It's a recent uh, zero day for Huawei routers that uh, a friend sent me. This is the most recent addition to the tool. Uh, it's a remote. <laughs> It's a remote um, PPP or DSL uh, password disclosure for Huawei routers. As you can see, these routers, at least in Mexico, are very badly configured. This is a scan of one single subnetwork, I mean, one single uh, network, and most of them are these routers that have their uh, administration interface listening publicly on the internet. So we're gonna just uh, try a random IP from those. and just uh, look for Huawei. There's a remote PPP, we click on the IP, put the IP, click accept, it says continue, and that's the password in clear text for the SL connection. <laughs> And well, yeah, that has been all. Thank you so much for accepting the talk, and I hope you like it, and I hope you contribute also. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Well, before I leave, I actually told you uh, you were all in. Get hooked up here. Just a little bit about Michelle. Like I said, she's also.